The deployment of 11,000 or so North Korean troops to Russia marks a sharp escalation and internationalization of Europe's biggest war in generations, with potential impacts on the battlefield, in Europe, and in Northeast Asia. It's an embarrassing comedown for Moscow, bad news for Ukraine, and a very scary development for South Korea and the rest of the world. Pyongyang has been underwriting Russia's war in Ukraine for years by supplying literal boatloads of artillery shells. Injecting actual combat troops into the war at a critical time not only ratchets up the pressure on a war-weary and manpower-weak Ukraine, it also deepens the bonds and implications of the four-month-old Russia-North Korea Mutual Defense Pact. But despite numerous evidences of the presence of North Korean troops in Ukraine, the reaction of Western leaders has been rather mild, this was said by German analyst Nico Lang. At the moment, I don't see the main European states coming together to develop a joint strategy. What do we want to achieve in Ukraine? How will we deal with Russia and its patrons? How can we achieve this together? This is what we need, the analyst noted. NATO told that the alliance is actively consulting on the issue. Also, according to German MP Rodrich Kaiswetter, Europe's failure to react to the deployment of North Korean troops is fatally negligent. He noted that a joint and decisive response by force is absolutely necessary, many European countries have wanted it for a long time. It is reported that North Korea has sent a total of 11,000 troops to Russia. Russian President Vladimir Putin has already confirmed that the Korean military is fighting against Ukraine. North Korea has sent troops to Russia to join the fight against Ukraine, a major shift in Moscow's effort to win the war, US officials confirmed. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin III called the North's presence a very, very serious escalation that would have ramifications in both Europe and Asia. What exactly are they doing? Left to be seen, Austin told. One day after the US said 3,000 North Korean troops have been deployed to Russia and warned that those forces will be fair game if they go into combat in Ukraine, the Pentagon slammed Russian President Vladimir Putin, suggesting the move is one of desperation. Vladimir Putin has become so desperate that he is now willing and soliciting, you know, potentially support from the DPRK to put there their personnel on the battlefield, said Deputy Pentagon Press Secretary Sabrina Singh. Russian lawmakers ratified a pact with North Korea envisioning mutual military assistance. The lower house of the Russian parliament, the State Duma, voted quickly to endorse the Comprehensive Strategic Partnership Treaty that Russia's President Vladimir Putin signed with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un on a visit to Pyongyang in June. The upper house is expected to follow suit soon. The pact obliges Russia and North Korea to immediately provide military assistance using all means if either is attacked. It marked the strongest link between Moscow and Pyongyang since the end of the Cold War. If the DPRK soldiers enter into combat, they would be co-belligerents, Singh said. And that is a very serious issue. The Pentagon also weighed in on the humanitarian situation in Gaza as Secretary of State Antony Blinken traveled to Doha to meet with Qatari officials, who have been key mediators in the Israel-Hamas war. The US continues to struggle to break the logjam of ceasefire negotiations between Israel and the militant group. The humanitarian situation is as dire, Singh said. So we know that a ceasefire would be the best way to get, whether it be food, water, humanitarian needs in, as well as medical treatment, into Gaza. Finally, Singh said US troops participated in an Iraqi-led operation against ISIS fighters in the Anbar province in Iraq. The Pentagon is evaluating the operation and was not aware of any US casualties in the operation. 
Singh also provided an update on a joint raid by U.S. and Iraqi troops earlier this week that killed more than half a dozen Islamic State leaders in Iraq, but also left two U.S. troops injured. Singh said the two U.S. troops are in stable condition and will get follow-on care at Walter Reed National Military Center outside of Washington, D.C. She also said a third American service member is being evaluated for TBI. This really highlights Russia's desperation, um, you know, tin cupping to the DPRK, to Iran, um, enticing DPRK soldiers, you know, if, if they were to ever enter the fight. Um, I think that shows that Putin has failed in his strategic objectives on the battlefield. Vladimir Putin has become so desperate that he is now willing and, and soliciting, um, you know, potentially support from the DPRK to put their their personnel on the battlefield. Um, and, you know, we're talking about uh, you know, over 500,000 um, casualties that, you know, Russia has experienced on the battlefield. Um, so if the DPRK soldiers enter into combat, um, they would be co-belligerents, and that is a very serious issue. Um, but it's not a... It's, you know, it's something that we're, you know, aware of this relationship. We're going to continue to monitor. Um, and um, I think, again, the important point here is that it really highlights Putin's desperation um, because he has really failed to meet his strategic objectives on the battlefield. You know, the humanitarian situation is, is dire. Um, so we know that a ceasefire would be the best way to get whether it be food, water, you know, humanitarian needs in, um, as well as medical treatment into into Gaza. Um, we also know that you know Israel has been effective um, in really dismantling Hamas in Gaza. Hamas, you know, cannot conduct the type of um, attack that they conducted on October seventh today. They just don't. They they have been. Um, dismantled into a way where they are not that, that same organization pre-October 7th. Um, we have also urged, you know, Sinwar's death is an opportunity. Um, let's use it. So again, you're seeing Secretary Blinken in the region. Um, I don't have more to add to his comments, but we certainly haven't given up hope. Um, it's something that this administration is going to continue to push for. With his NATO counterparts in Brussels. And, and earlier today, U.S. forces participated in an Iraqi-led operation against ISIS fighters in the Anbar province in Iraq. Our assessment of the operation is still ongoing, and to my knowledge, there were no U.S. personnel injured in the operation. Additionally, I have an update on the two service members wounded in a partnered raid with Iraqi security forces on October 22nd. Earlier this week, the ISF, enabled by personnel from CJTF OIR, conducted strikes and follow-on raids on multiple ISIS locations in central Iraq, targeting several senior ISIS leaders and killing at least seven ISIS operatives. During the operation, two U.S. military personnel were wounded by an explosion while assisting Iraqi forces with site exploitation. While both service members sustained serious injuries, they are in stable condition and are currently en route to Walter Reed Medical Center for follow-on care. Additionally, we recently learned a third service member is being assessed for potential TBI. And as you know, TBI numbers can fluctuate over time. All are in stable condition and receiving the care that they need.